Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the biggest stars in the country. And we've got one for you today. Jess Robinson shot to fame on the 2017 Britain's Got Talent and since then has been touring the UK. She's back with a brand new tour for 2018. You can find out more at jessrobinson.co.uk. And I'm delighted to say that she joins us on the show now. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm having a, a very nice day. It's sunny where I am in London, so I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. Are you trying to aggravate me already? It's cloudy, grey and raining here. Is it? That's not nice to do that. That's sort of I'm like sorry. punching me in the face before we've even started. I'm just excited because I haven't seen the sun for a bit, so <laughs> I'll send it your way, I promise. <laughs> if you would, that would be nice. Hey, listen, it's lovely to talk to you. I always think if you've got the killer blow of being delicious and talented, you've got everything really, haven't you? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, though, does it? And I've noticed in, in what you do, I mean, the charm and the warmth is the key. If people don't like it, it doesn't matter how funny you are. I completely agree with that. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think you have to have a bit of camaraderie and banter and, you know, a two-way love with the audience before you can um, start expecting them to laugh at and with you um and yeah that's that's a, i think i feel for me anyway for my brand of comedy that's that's um i like us all to be in on the joke together mm. um you know and that and, and warmth is um yeah an important part of that as we all know you started your career last year when you uh, decided to audition for britain's got talent you'd done nothing before then that's what the public think but it turns out you've actually had a career doing exactly the same thing it's just that we happen to see you doing it on the telly exactly <laughs> it's that age-old thing i've been um, i've been plugging away for years i think mm. i left i left school at 2000 in 2001 and just sort of started working as a jobbing actress and doing my impressions and things like that and um bgt had scouted me for about four years and I had always said, no, thank you. I want to do it the old fashioned way. And then um, last year, um, I don't know what changed exactly, really, but I just thought, oh, well, maybe I could do with a profile hit so I can start going on tour and, you know, try and take my career to the next level. Um, and, it, and also, it seems that lots, lots and lots more professionals are doing that now. Um, but I think that certainly dance acts and magicians don't get the same stigma as uh, singers and comedians and you know performers doing that way so it's a funny thing really it's tricky I mean I've had them all on over the years the winners the losers those who have been mocked and those who have succeeded and just gone on to yeah. have tours I mean Paul Zerdin is probably the most famous yeah. that has done incredibly yeah. well winning America's Got Talent I Fantastic. think it's okay if you're good it's a risk if you're not because there's always the chance that the producers could ask you to do it for mockery yeah Absolutely. I was really um, quite frightened of that, um, that I, I would either that I would be edited in not a very nice way, because, mm. of course, you know, you're making a deal with the devil in a way because it's yeah. up to them. They're making their TV show. But also, um, I didn't want to go on and do a bad performance and then the people that I do already worked for suddenly turn around and go, oh, actually, she's rubbish. We're not having her again. And that was it. You know, mm. that was my worst fear. <laughs> when did you realise that you'd got the art of a mimic? Because, of course, the art of doing people well is rare. We all think we can do it, but most of us can't. Yeah, I don't. Well, I um, I had always taken the mickey out of teachers at school and my mum, but I had never thought that I would ever do that for a career. I, I wanted to be uh, a serious actress or a classical singer. And I was, um, I left uh, school at 18 and, and um, by pure chance managed to get an agent. Um, and I was doing a pantomime uh, just on my year out before I was going to go to university. And um, I found out that the next produ production that they were going to put on um, was Little Voice, you know, with the, the film with, with Jane Horrocks, That's where right. she does all those, all those singers like um, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe and uh, <laughs> Judy Garland. So, um, yeah, so, and I just told a massive, massive fib because I was desperate not to go back to my day job, which was working in a really miserable stockroom on Oxford Street in the back of a shop. And I just lied and said, I'm brilliant at impressions. Please, can I audition? <laughs> And the director said, oh, didn't know that. Of course you can, Jess. Um, it's in 10 days. And, and I learned, just had to learn. Um, wow. And luckily I could do it, but... Oh. Fibs, I've got myself in, I've got myself into a few fixes before with my fibs. Hey, listen, if yeah. it works and gets you a gig, then don't knock it. 
Well, absolutely, and it's you know shaped my whole career since then. It's been crazy, really. Mm. Yeah. I saw that show, Little Voice. Actually, I think you did it with Beverly Callard, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I, I did a tour a few years later, um, and it was directed by the writer Jim Cartwright with Beverly Callard, and she was great as well. Beverly, she was a proper. She used to describe that part as uh, she's like a juggernaut. Mm. Just sort of keeps going and ploughing yep. through. Yeah. When we look at the people you've worked with, I have huge respect. And if you look at my website, most of the people I speak to are special acts, comedians, vents, mm. magicians, because it's a tough life. I mean, it's life on the road, mostly one-nighters. Did you ever yeah. think, oh, this is a lot of work? I mean, at least if you're in a musical or if you're an actor, you could be in somewhere for a long period of time. What you do mostly means you've got to go to the them which is exhausting isn't it yeah i think it's all part of trying to build a bit of a fan base though and um and you know i feel so grateful that you know some in some of my um venues i've you know sold i don't know 30 tickets 70 tickets but they're all strangers they're not even my mum and i'm just so excited <laughs> and grateful that people would want to come and see me it's amazing people um, put their hand yeah, in their pocket it still never gets on yeah. yeah, it's just I feel really grateful and, and lucky. And this is my first tour, so, you know, proper proper tour. So um, it is uh, lonely, um, but it's also really exciting. And there's no one to blame. I mean, your name is on the tin. When we go to the website, we see all those dates. I'm going to read some of those out in a moment. But what's incredible is there's no one else that you can say, oh, well, it, it didn't work because of this. It is Jess Robinson. Here come the girls. And it's all about you, whether it's in Glasgow on March the 1st, Stockton, Scunthorpe, Sheffield, Brighton, Chorley, <laughs> Southend, Bath, Cardiff, Northampton, London. You've no one else to blame, have you, Jess, now? No, and now you've made me feel really scared. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and everybody <laughs> likes it, and uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think if I, in in a way, it's like Britain's Got Talent. If I didn't put myself out there and go for it, I would always wonder what would happen. Listen, so anybody like, who can do Edinburgh, I think, is going to have no problem playing Sheffield on a Tuesday. I mean, to me, that's the scariest place on earth because they're out to sort of get you. It's a place full of critics, <laughs> not necessarily supporters. And I mean, you did three years on the trot, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm going back to Edinburgh um, this summer and that will be my fifth year. And um, I can't wait. I learned my craft there, really. And um, it's, it is, it's really tough. For a, lot, for a lot of comedians, your whole sort of year, your whole cycle is from, instead of Christmas to Christmas, it's Edinburgh to Edinburgh. Right. And, you know, you, you finish your Edinburgh show and sleep for most of September. October's recovering. And then... Uh, by November, I guess, you're already wondering whether or not you're going to do a show and January comes and you've got to do your photo shoot, come up with a name for it. You haven't even written it yet. And then, you know, round, round it goes again. Incredible. It's, um, it's pretty crazy. I love some of the people you do. I mean, they're almost funny before you start. When we look at someone like Cheryl Cole, I mean, in one oh. word, we know who you're doing and who you're sort of affectionately mocking. There is an element of mockery, in, isn't it? Because these people are almost a caricature of the cells at times. Absolutely. I mean, Cheryl, I, I, I do love her, and I wish I looked like her, but absolutely, I'm affectionately mocking her. I just, I love her. I love, just love the way, I, when, when I do her voice, I almost start to feel beautiful. So it's, it's really good. I did, um, I was doing a radio show the other day, and the presenter knew Stacey Solomon. She rang her, and she made me do Stacey Solomon to Stacey Solomon down oh, the phone, and it was, beautiful. oh, it was incredible. Oh, my God. I only know yeah. Sue Pollard. Do you do her? Or no, Ruth Maddock? Really. Hello, campers. <laughs> I worked with Ruth Maddock once. Did she you? Was great. Yeah. In fact, Sue Pollard came to do see the show afterwards, and there was this funny rivalry between them. And Sue was doing high kicks in the foyer afterwards, <laughs> and stealing stealing um, Ruth Maddock's focus. That Sue sounds Pollard, about right. She was furious. In this new show, who are you enjoying doing the most? I mean, whether it's the sort of traditional sort of lies that people love you for, or the well, Shirley. I, Ma oh, I do like her. You know, uh, if you're very lucky. You can actually learn to do Lysha with me on stage in the show. And, and you can impress all of the friends and they will just absolutely love it. But I, I, like, um, I like traditional people like Billie Holiday. The suspense is killing me. Wow. I can't 
sand and certainty. Beautiful. And then we've got, you know, just the normal TV TV personalities like Alex Jones uh, from the One Show. Uh, it's, it's also great fun to do. And yeah, when you do that one, do you just get an auto cue and deliberately misread it? Is that how you do, <laughs> Alex? And not that I'm saying anything. You know, you remind me of in a way, I, I've become very friendly with Terry Fater in Las Vegas, and I have such admiration for him because he's been there 10 years. He's now in his second 10 year contract. And like you, underneath everything is a beautiful voice. And I think to pull off someone like Billy, you can't do that unless you're incredibly talented at what you're trying to do. It, it's a it's a gift you've got I guess on top of another gift isn't it you've got to be a great singer to pull that off I think you're probably right I, um, someone someone said to me this morning I was doing a, a, an interview and they said you know how do you master what's the secret with singing impressions how do you master that and, and I mean you have to be able to sing first right. and foremost to be able to do them and it sounded like a really stupid answer but yeah you, you have to to be able to know where to place your voice and to be able to make the tones and I guess you can't really impersonate... Like, like if you were an artist, you wouldn't be able to just, uh, I don't know, impersonate a, a Monet unless you knew techniques and how to paint yourself first, I guess. Mm. And, of course, Britney Spears must be the easiest one to impersonate because she doesn't sing live, does she? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is <laughs> like, really, baby, baby. Yeah, <laughs> she's a bit like a singing chipmunk. She's quite Beautiful. fun. Do you do it in the mirror? How do you get it? Is it listening to them, watching them? How do you get it down? I listen to a lot of music. I mm. really adore just listening to music and singing along. And I sing, actually, unconsciously, when I was young, I would sing along um, with people like Kate Bush and things like that. And and you would, I would just start doing the voice because I wanted to sing along accurately with them. Right. And sort of I wanted to be them. So... Um, yeah, and when I first started out, I and, and I still do this, I uh, get a little clip of the person speaking or singing and then I'll record myself doing the same and then I'll just listen and compare and listen and compare and, mm. you know, do it that way. And what's also tricky about what you do, of course, Jess, is the fact that you've got to keep it moving. I mean, you can't just do three impressions in a 90-minute set. That's sort of hoist by your own petard, isn't it? Being brilliant means you've got to have more and more and more and more. It must be really <laughs> challenging to do a proper full show. Um, yes, and I mean, yes, but there is, it's exciting and fantastic to have a wealth of loved singers and celebrities to be able to choose from. If I tell you what I would struggle with, if I was only allowed to do people from the noughties, I would really struggle right. because um, I think there's a real style now with uh, Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and Ariana Grande. They, they, I guess. I struggle to hear the distinctions between them. They're well, they're not so the, processed, you know, aren't they? Yeah, they all sort yeah, of sound absolutely. the same. <laughs> absolutely. That's exactly right. Mm. So um, I even ha I had a gag in one of my shows where I just not changed my voice and a list of them were just real past. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you heard Judy Garland or Kate Bush or mm. uh, even Jesse J, actually. If you heard those, I mean, uh, there are, uh, or Adele or Amy Winehouse, you would just know them. Yep. immediately wouldn't you but now you have to wait for the dj to say who it was i tell um, you the one i, I think like is that, sort of verging thing. on ridiculous at times although i love her very much is paloma faith she's got such a bizarre way and crazy. affectation hasn't she crazy she's like a foghorn when yeah. she sings. <laughs> well, if she speaks she's like a little baby that's, that's it LSD, isn't she? <laughs> and then she goes all bassy doesn't she <laughs> yeah well, Yeah, brilliant. Listen, I want to come and see you, if you don't mind, in March face-to-face -face because... I would love that. Doing it over the phone is all right, but I think in person we'll film something and do a proper thing for YouTube because you're so talented and gifted. And I thank you for your time. I want to give this tour a big plug because you're one of those who is so hardworking. And again, people might think that you just suddenly had this big break last year. But as, as I always say to everybody, the more talented you are, the more disciplined you have to be. And to get it as down as good as you have, you've been doing it your entire life. And that discipline is inspiring. March the 1st, the tour begins in Glasgow via Stockton, Scunthorpe, Sheffield, Brighton, Chorley, South End, Bath, Cardiff, Northampton, two nights in London, fabulous. Uh, and then you'll be going to Redhill, Manchester, Camberley, Cambridge. You can get more dates by going to uh, jessrobinson.co.uk. The tour ends on the 29th of April in Birmingham. I'll come and see you in Sheffield. Thank you so much for your time, Jess. Here come the girls. Is there an S missing on comes or shouldn't we talk about that? Here come the girls.
It's not here comes the girl. No, the girls can't comes. They just come. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> we'll leave that there and I'll see you in March.